Welcome. Today's topic is abstraction. Specifically, we're going to be discussing abstraction in the context of computer science so that you can use these concepts when you're either programming or designing computers or any of these because it is a topic that permeates all of computer science in, in every discipline. Let's start by defining what exactly abstraction is. Abstraction is a very high level concept. It's this idea that we can represent components of a system. And if you haven't seen uh, my video on systems, uh, please do so. There'll be a link uh, where you can do that either here or at the end of the video. Um, but what abstraction does is allows us to take a concept of a system and use it because we we know how to interface with it. We know what its interface uh, you know details are, so that we can utilize this system. But we don't have to know exactly how it works. We don't need to know the nuts and bolts of how exactly this system works in order to make effective use of it. It enables us to create and work with other systems. Now you've probably noticed that. Over the last decades, computers have been growing and growing in complexity. And this is no mistake. The reason why computers have been able to grow is in part due to things like the Moore's Law and the, the constant increase in the amount of processing power that we have. Um, but in a large um, way, the reason why is abstraction. Because as we invent new solutions on computers, whether they're hardware or software, we use abstraction to enable us to build on top of these. You've probably heard of the term, um, you know, build on the shoulders of giants, uh, don't recreate the wheel. All of these things apply to abstraction. This is an extremely important concept in computer science, and it is not one that I feel that it is okay to just say, oh, okay, I understand what abstraction is. If you understand abstraction deeply, it enables you to view problems in such a way where you can introduce your own solutions because you see the environment now as a, an ocean of components and systems and things at your disposal that you can either find a new link between or identify a weak link and make an improvement to that. But it requires a high level knowledge of understanding the landscape because no one person can actually understand how all of these systems work in detail, not for all of them. And the other really major point to take home here is that the parts of the, the overall system that you want to understand very well, you can now because you can focus on. And you don't need to know all those details of all the other systems that your subsystem is relating to. You just need to understand how to relate to them and how to interface with them. Let's look at some examples now of abstraction in the real world and not just in computer science examples, although we'll use those too. A keyboard is a great abstraction that we use to interface with the computer. Right? We want to somehow get words on the computer. Uh, we don't necessarily need to understand, unless you're building the word processor, how the word processor works, or how the display works, or how the processor works, although we hopefully will be as we go through this course. Um, but the keyboard is an interface that allows us humans to type words, uh, in this case the, it's the three finger salute that's being typed there, into the computer and then the computer's layers of abstraction can work their magic and voila, we have words that we can save. A microwave has a relatively complex system. It has you know, a microwave uh, unit that, that cooks our food. It has some electronics that deals with the timing and, and the, maybe the weight of the food if it's some kind of smart uh, microwave and it's, it's figuring out how long it should cook for. There's different sensors in there. There's maybe a blower to, to send air out. Um, all these different parts. We don't need to know how all those parts work in order to use a microwave, right? Uh, an elevator is another example. Um, an elevator 
is not an extremely complex system, but it is a relatively complex system of pulleys and safety uh, systems and all kinds of things so that it doesn't plummet down. And we walk into an elevator and we don't need to know how the motor works and exactly how many feet are between each floor. We just press a button and the elevator goes to another floor. Um, a car is a great example, right? I don't need to know how the motor works, the transmission. I don't even need to know technically how to change my own oil, although hopefully I, I do. I, I enjoy cars, so I do. Um, but, you know, a car, I can drive it. I know my interface. I know that I have a steering wheel, a gear shift. I know that I have a gauge cluster that's going to give me information about the car and I can drive, right? And this works its way all the way up to space shuttles and whatever else it is that you want to do. Abstraction is um, the only way that we as humans can deal with the complexity of the world around us. And it enables us as engineers to focus on the pieces that we need to and improve them, build them, or make them better. In computer science, I love to use the analogy of an onion for abstraction. And that's because, especially in software engineering, it's often the case that the layers of um, abstraction are hierarchical. And you can view the hardware of the computer as the center of the onion, and you can then work your way out through layers of abstraction. So generally speaking, when you're using a computer, you're way out here on the skin of the onion. You're using applications um, as a user, or perhaps you're even programming on, on languages like JavaScript or TypeScript that might be interpreted. Um, and those languages are actually interpreted by an application. So they're, they're very far out in the abstraction hierarchy. Perhaps you've programmed in C or a compiled language like Java or C, then you've maybe moved yourself a few layers in on the onion. But what we're doing here is working our way in towards this hardware. So the center of the onion is the hardware, and then around the hardware we have microcode, and then we have maybe our operating system with its libraries uh, and its uh, service call API, and then we have applications that run on top of the operating system and compilers that um, you know create our binaries if we're using a compiled language. But all of these layers of abstraction have enabled us to know less and less and less about everything underneath them, the center of the onion. Once we end up uh, programming out here, you don't necessarily need to know how the gates of a computer actually perform arithmetic or how many transistors make up a gate or even what materials make up the transistor. This is a powerful concept, but I think it's very important for us learning to be effective programmers and to know computer science thoroughly to understand these things at a pretty reasonable level because it will make us better programmers as we're out here. Here's another uh, view we can use that's a little bit less layered than the onion, um, but it's also an effective way to look at abstraction as a software engineer. Uh, at the lowest level here, we have our hardware, right? Those are our physical components of, of the computer. On a modern computer, whether it's a full desktop or laptop, or it's a mobile system, we then have an operating system on top of that. Now, some embedded devices, like Internet of Things devices, um, you know, maybe computers in, in your automobile, things like that, might not have this operating system layer. But most general purpose computers that you interface with do. This operating system, it actually wraps the hardware, just like we see with the Onion, right? It actually kind of uh, protects the hardware. Um, it is the gatekeeper to the hardware. Any applications that want to run have to talk to the operating system first in order to reach the hardware. And then us, as the users, we don't generally... Um, interface directly with the operating system, although we can to open applications and to find files. Generally, we're going to be interfacing with applications, which the operating system manages, right? So we end up with this nice hierarchy. And if you remember from our systems talk, when we discussed how we talk between systems, we said that we want to use things called interfaces to do that. So when we look at this, this very general view of abstraction of the layers between the user and the hardware, and we're just talking high level layers here, um, 
we can actually draw the abstractions uh, in terms of the interfaces that we use to move between them. So from the user to the application, we have something called the human computer interface here. This is what you think of as your UI, right? Um, could be a voice UI. There's all kinds of UIs uh, nowadays, but a UI is a user interface, right? And this is why there's so much thought given to this. Um, you know, you might famously remember that as the, the PC era was evolving, that, you know, there was the PCs and then there was the Macs, right? And what made Mac different? Well, Mac, at least they thought so, put a lot of thought into uh, their user interface and making it perfect because that was the interface between the user and the rest of the computer, right? Because everything else down here was kind of hidden away from the user and this was your one opportunity to make something special, right? Uh, between the application and the operating system, we have another layer here called the System Call API. In Windows, they use a slightly different term for it. But what this is, is how applications request things of the operating system. So if your application wants to open a file, for example, it makes a system call to the operating system. If you want to save a file, if you need to get I.O. resources, if you need to display something on the screen, any of these actions that the application wants to do are managed by the operating system. Now, what benefit does that give us? Well, as an application engineer, we don't need to recreate the wheel every time. We don't need to know what size monitor you have and what resolution it's running at. We don't even need to know necessarily um, if you're using a modern windowed operating system like Windows or, or uh, Mac or Linux, we don't need to know how to create a window and resize it and deal with all of those interface issues. Um, all we need to know is that there is a windowing system and that we can use it. So now we, as the application developer, can focus on building our application to do exactly what our application was designed to do and not have to worry about all the plumbing that goes with it. Now in turn, the operating system has its own layer in which it uses to interface with the hardware and that's called the physical machine interface. Now this is there because Operating systems may work on slightly varying types of hardware. So rather than have to rewrite entire operating systems just because you change some aspects of the hardware, we have this ability to manipulate this one abstraction layer to compensate for those changes. This abstraction that we're looking at here is a very important view for a programmer to understand. This is how we take our high-level code and how our high-level code actually becomes the binary that runs on the computer. Now, we're going to be talking about the details of this in much more depth later on. Uh, right now, I just want to use it as an example of important abstractions that we're going to learn a lot more about. In this example, we have a small function here that we've written in C. And C, while it is a a low um, level version of a high level language. It is a high level language. It is compiled. And what a compiler does is it takes our code that we write in something more universal and easy to read like C and we make it specific to the platform uh, by compiling into something called assembler. Now this assembler that we're looking at in this example is for ARM version 8. ARM is a processor that you commonly find in mobile devices, although we find it in more and more things these days, including uh, some PC level uh, platforms as well. We're going to talk a lot about the different processor platforms in some future videos. Uh, but this assembler is specific to that platform. Now, what's important to denote here is that our function up there, which, by the way, basically takes in an array and an index, and it swaps the elements of the array at that index and the, the index plus one. It swaps the values of those. Um, that same function, we might want to use it on, say, a phone platform and also on a uh, x86 platform, which is the traditional uh, desktop platform or laptop. Uh, but now to do that, we know because of we have abstraction in our, our toolkit that we could change out this compiler, right? We could take this same function 
and use this compiler to compile it to the assembler that runs on, uh, say, a phone or, or a mobile device, or even some of the newer computers that are going to use ARM. Or we can use this compiler, change this out for an x86 compiler, and create different assembler from this same code that will run on an x86 based machine. Now, one more important thing to denote here, I'm not going to go into the assembler yet, that's coming as far as what this is and, and how we use it. This process here, this assembly process, is where we take this assembler and we just basically do a one-to-one -one translation for what's known as the assembler mnemonic to the actual binary representation of that. Without going too deep, I just want to use one quick example to give you an idea of what I mean. If you look at this add instruction here, I'm just going to make up the, the string of binary numbers to keep it small right now um, that I want to use for this. So let's say that uh, an add instruction is represented by 11001 for whatever platform we're on. This add mnemonic and assembler would directly translate to the binary digits 11001. Assembler is not compiled in the same way that a high level language is compiled and transformed into assembler. It's more of a translation. Assembler is really for our eyes to make it more comprehensible because when we look at this, we, we glaze over pretty quickly. And I'm sure you might feel you glaze over pretty quickly looking at this as well, which is one of the reasons why abstraction is such a powerful tool, because now we can move to this, and we can move even higher now with interpreted languages and things like that. So that's everything we need to know for now about abstraction. Understand that this is an incredible tool that we are going to use throughout all of these videos. Uh, please check out uh, the videos on systems and uh, the next video in this series.